Hi, I wanted to show you how to use um, Flipgrid. There's a few little nuances and settings that you want to make sure that you set up when you set up your grid. So a video was the best way to show that. And this is the main page that you'll find when you get onto flipgrid.com and you'll want to go to the educator login. Once you click that, um, if you've not been on Flipgrid before, you may need to sign in. I recommend with Google if that's an option. Um, otherwise, set up your account, and then once you're signed in, you'll come to a screen that looks like this. Now, mine has grids on it because I've used it before. Yours would be blank down here below if it's your first time. Um, so the first thing you're going to do to create a grid is just click on this new grid button here. And you're going to select a grid community type. Now, for uh, my specific school district, um, and those to whom this video is directed toward in Nebo School District, you are going to choose school email domain. And when you click that, um, it's going to give you a few options in just a moment. Um, you're going to name your grid, and I'm just, um, I've been doing fall traditions this week with some classes as demonstrations, um, just to get students used to it. And then here you can go with the auto generated code and you can also personalize it. Um, so I can delete this and make it what I would like. So I'm going to make my code this time green fall. Um, so you can customize it in any way you'd like uh, using your last name in the topic or if you're um, responding with a book anything like that. Or you can just go with that auto-generated numbers and letters. And then you can also personalize your grid here with some different options. Um, for my use with fall, this fall trees picture has worked well. And then click next. Now here's where that school email domain option comes in. And in this box, you're going to need to put, um, the domain is everything after the at symbol that would apply to your students or anyone that would be logging in. Here in our school district, the student domain is um, stu.nebo.edu. And that's the part for our students that comes after the at symbol in their email addresses. And then just click enter and it will populate. I'm also going to put in the um, teacher domain um, just as a precaution to make sure that they're able to talk to each other and things. We have some, um, just because we're on two different domains, we sometimes run into problems. So it's just a good call to always put those both in um, for those in Nebo School District. And then if you're watching this in another school district, you may just want to check with your tech guys or um, try out a few different things here and make sure that they work. So I've got my um, domain for my students and the domain for the teachers all set to go and I can click on this launch my grid. So here um, it's telling me my grid is ready. It's telling me the name of my grid, Green Fall Traditions. You can see the picture I chose here and that flip code that I customized. Okay, now you're also going to want to just click here on customize your grid and check your settings. We've got our details, we've got our community type, all of that we chose in the beginning. But right down here is where you're really going to want to pay attention. I don't know about you, but I don't want an email every time a student submits a video, especially when they start replying to each other. I could have 100 videos in 10 to 15 minutes and 100 emails show up in my email if that's if I leave this on. So I particularly prefer to turn that off. Um, I also don't need my students to receive email notifications um, when their grid has been replied to. I do want my grid to be active. That means that it will um, be accessible to students. If you're done with your grid and you want students to not be able to access it anymore to sneak videos in, you can always toggle on this and turn it to inactive when you're finished with it. Um, I just leave allow for downloads. I don't know of any students who've actually downloaded their videos and their response, but they sure could. And I leave that open. Um, if you wanted to personalize an image, you could throw it up in there and then just make sure you click update grid. So now I'm at that home page for my grid. And I am going to go right down here. And for my purposes, I have turned off this introduction. So I'm going to go over here and make introductions inactive. And I have just had students use this main ideas grid. And so I turned that to active. You would do that same thing for adding anything here. 
Within the grid, you can add new topics. So if you are just doing a unit on multiple multiplication, but you wanted students to add several exit ticket videos throughout that unit, you could label your grid here, multiplication, and then you can add a new topic, which is what this introductions topic is. If I add a new topic, and let's say I want it to be multiplication of 10, okay? And then I can select right here what I want my prompt to be for students. And I'm just going to put the explain the pattern of multiplying by 10. And then I can also choose here my video response time. You um, can go up here to five minutes, um, depending on your you know, your purpose and how long you want students to continue their conversation and their um, talk. And then down here, um, I here's your video moderation. And I turn this off because I don't, again, want to have to go to my email and moderate every comment. So I leave this off for my um, topics. I can see their grids. We can have conversations if a student decides to be inappropriate, but I'm very upfront in setting my expectations. And generally don't have a problem with that and don't see the need to take my time to um, moderate that and approve each video. And um, then I can also select here when I want it to start and when I want it to end, which is really great if um, you want to set up this grid for your whole unit and then set the days that you want it to be live so the students don't see them all the time. And again, there's that active and unactive. Okay. Um, Let's see here, right down here at the very bottom. This is the other thing you want to really make sure that you decide what you want here. At the end of a video that a student records, they can, they, the program asks them to take a selfie, which becomes a thumbnail picture for their video. Um, the default is that students are allowed to have stickers and drawings for their uh, selfies. That can run into a problem when students are spending 10 to 15 minutes dressing themselves up in their selfie picture instead of just moving on to the purpose of the video. So you can turn that off right here in this video feature section. Click right here. I can choose stickers only, drawings only, or none. And most of the time I would set that to none unless there's, you know, a fun, you're doing a Halloween themed or something like that where you would want students to be able to have those stickers and have that a little bit more fun and um, openness. And then this is to allow students to basically like the videos and then um, display the number of views a video has received. I turn that off as well. Um, I, I don't see a, a need for students to look and see how many people have watched their video within a class structure. And if that can be a little bit disheartening for some students who don't have a lot of their classmates watching their videos. Um, and then I do have, I do want students to be allowed to reply to each other and I do want students to be able to title their video if they would like to. Okay, and those are the main things that I would pay attention to in setting up my grid. Back here to the bottom and click create topic. It's going to go ahead and generate that. Um, my So my flip code is this green fall and there's a direct link to this new topic, which you could put into classroom or whatever other learning management system or um, system you have in place to direct students directly to links. So you could copy those and send that directly to students within their assignments. And so now I have this multiplication of 10 topic underneath my grid. So I'm going to go back here to green fall traditions. And now I've got green fall traditions. I have that ideas, my introductions topic. And now that multiplication of 10 is right here. I'm going to quickly show you how to get to that same menu if I'm not setting up a new topic. For example, if I'm using this ideas topic, I just need to click over here on this pencil to edit. And I'm back in that same menu I just showed you so that you can um, set all of those settings for that topic as well. If you have any questions about this and you are in your school district, um, go ahead and talk to your digital coach. They'll be happy to help you set this up and answer any questions or troubleshoot anything as you start using it.